Father's Day is coming up this weekend, guys. You're both involved in the NFL Dads, the Fatherhood Initiative. So let's start with Usama. How influential was your dad in your love for football? Very, very, very influential. I think about my first memory of playing ball. It was actually in the front yard. I've got four, I got five older brothers, and my dad was teaching us how to tackle. Keith just learned, just heard about this story the other day <laughs> because we were talking about our heroes, and and I I was talking about how my dad taught me how to tackle. Just be fearless and look the opponent in the eye, and don't put your head down. And you know I uh, I played with that fearless fearlessness and going into every tackle with the will to just say, I'm going to get this ball carrier down. And I think my dad pushing me every day, being able to be at my games, praying with me before every game, and uh, him being able to see my last game before he passed away, that meant the world to me. So to start off with my dad by my side, to, to end playing with my dad by my side, it's, uh, it's emotional to bring up, but you know, I can't say enough about how how influential he was to me. What was it like doing a Super Bowl commercial with your dad when you played in the game about a decade ago? I mean, how cool was that? Man, that that was amazing. That was amazing because throughout the entire trip. So first off, the NFL, I still remember playing. And uh, I told him, hey, dad, they want to shoot a commercial. <laughs> they want to talk about how I worked in FedEx field and how I sold lemonade and cotton candy. And they want you to be a part of it because I kept getting fired. <laughs> and, and throughout the entire shoot, he kept reminding me of that. Like, Hey, you, you ever thought after getting fired, you'll be here today, right here with me in LA shooting a commercial. I'm like, man, no. And he said, only God could write that story. Only God. Man, I, well, did you really get fired for high stepping on the field, or was that just part of the, you know, doing a commercial? You got to play along. <laughs> so, so I got fired for a number of reasons. One of them <laughs> was going out on the field. The other one was for watching the game and not selling. <laughs> so they, and you know what? The change up on the commercial was snow cones. So in the commercial, I was selling snow cones, but it gotcha. was for not selling lemonade. Gotcha, gotcha. How about you, Keith? How? how how influential was your dad in, in your love for football as you as you grew up? Uh, and you grew up in Jersey, right? In my backyard. Yeah, yeah you know, sort of the opposite. My father was was zero percent influential in me playing football because that he my dad was like five two. He was he never played football. He was and uh, but he was influential in the way that I played football. You know because he helped me keep everything in perspective. He had a really difficult life with some extreme challenges. And so he approached every day that no matter what you did, love people, love what you're doing and give it your all. And so he didn't care if I played football or if I played chess, right? So he, he was just like, treat people the way you want to be treated, work as hard as you can and live every moment to the fullest. And that was like the real life lesson I took from him. Both of you guys are involved with the NFL player engagement. And I, I know the player engagement does a ton of different activities, workshops, career development for players. Talk to me a little bit about what you do as far as not just preparing guys for life after the NFL, but guys who are currently in the league and are already fathers who are dealing with not only the stress of the job, but also trying to be a parent at, at home. I, I, I chime in on this because I, I just wanted to talk about this one event. And mm -hmm. I know Keith, Keith could list out resources that are provided as well. But the Family and Football Clinic is the highlight of my year. You know, going, going to the Super Bowl, thinking about, you know, of course, we got to work throughout the Super Bowl week. But the Family and Football Clinic, where we, we celebrate with other fathers throughout the league. We link arms, and it's truly a brotherhood to celebrate how valuable fathers are in their families' lives, in the community, and how being a father is just – it's it's something that we got to we gotta not take for granted, but we got to celebrate. We understand how, how valuable we are. Now that I am a father, I see why my dad pushed me so hard. I see why my dad didn't let me give up. And events like that are just a – one, one of the instances where we celebrate fatherhood throughout the league. Yeah. 
And what I love about just to tag team that answer about the event and then talk a little bit more broadly about some other things. But what I love about that event is that we provide tangible tools to NFL dads. And we have four different stations that are like guys in the guise of football, but really teach a broader lesson. So whether it's the tickle tackle where, right, like, hey, but that teaches like it's okay to be physically have physical intimacy, right? Like have that be being a warm dad. There's one that talks about words of affirmation, how to speak like life over your children. And so what's really what I love about that event is it's interactive. It's, 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 I know it's, it's family and football, but it really is a familial atmosphere where we also bring in sort of the, an elder statesman this year, it was Tony Dungy to kind of drop some wisdom on everybody about his road uh, in fatherhood. And so it's neat because as we were some of the things we have four pillars in player engagement, um, financials, financial literacy, continuing education and personal and professional development. Like you, you kind of said, Rob, about a lot of things we do in professional development, but this is such a, such an important um, part of our personal development pillar, because if we can equip our players to be the best fathers that they can be, then that speaks life into the next generation. There are a lot of guys who, who may not be involved or active in their children's lives, especially if, if they had them at a, at a younger age. How do you impress upon them that it's never too late, that, that even if you haven't had interaction with your child, mm-hmm. that you don't know your son or your daughter, that you know, you're just making a paycheck for child support, whatever it is, to be actively involved in their life, like how impactful that can be as that child grows up. Yeah, and I think, Rob, that is the message, is to encourage, empower, and equip guys, because in our heart of heart, they want to be in their, their children's life. So that's what we do. We empower, we encourage, and we equip them to do just that. Give them the tools to be able to reach in and and build that relationship and encourage them to do it, right? You you know what? I I just have to add in one thing, because being a father, I think about the growth that we have throughout the years. And I'm I'm new to this. My daughter's five years old, (laughs) but every year, every day, I feel like I'm learning something new from her. And I think about my dad and how we communicated earlier, earlier in my lifetime, it wasn't that strong. So now taking the approach that, you know what, there were certain conversations that I didn't want to have, but now I can encourage these guys, these, these brothers in the NFL to start having these conversations with their children, start loving on them. Like Keith talked about, Hey, hold their hand, hug them, tell them you love them. And that was, that's something that celebrated. That's something that, I think I didn't get too often as a child, but after a while, you start to realize, wow, this is really, really making a huge impression on on my children. You have a five-year-old daughter, Keith. You you have a daughter as well, don't you? Yeah, four. Yeah, so (laughs) I'm even less experienced than Usama. (laughs) I'm more experienced than the both of you then. I have twins who are seven and a half, so we're all right in that same boat. And I kind of think, like, I'm not – it's partial towards – dad's a, being a girl dad right and and teaching them uh, the way that I want to see them grow up and the relationships they enter into is, is how I'm constantly speaking life over them but also showing love for my wife and showing like to the point where like it gets on my daughter's nerves like hey girls I love your mommy yeah okay we get it dad but consistently doing that so they see so h- how do you go about that with talking to players about the relationships they're in when they are married, when they're in that relationship with the mother of their children to beyond the relationship with the child, but the relationship with everyone around them. Either you one. Know, some, one, one thing for me that I'm reminded of just listening to you talk about it is the importance of leading by example. Our children watch us every moment. They watch our every move. So if me and my wife are beefing, if we're not seeing eye to eye, if we're if we're yelling back and forth, she's watching and she'll come over sometimes and try to soften the mood a little bit, you know, and that that reminds me to say, oh, man, Ari is watching me. And now I also have a boy, too, who's two years old. 
and he's watching me and he's growing and he's looking to be like that. So if dad can stay poised, even when he's mad, even when he's angry, even when he doesn't get his way, that's an example. So thinking about how we can lead by example as fathers and impress upon those same things to the players that are in this league and also the legends, that's of the utmost importance. We deal with a lot of stress. We, we play this game at a high level. The pressure is always on. And even when you exit, it can be stressful. But to think about how when coming home, it was just like, wow, OK, I got this baby girl now. You know, that 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 takes the stress out. And you can't be mad at her. You can't be mad at him. But if you are, you can't be mad for too long. Keith, you want to talk on that a little bit? Yeah, just I would say that one of the ways we do it through player engagement is to be intentional about including significant others in events. That shows right away that we that we there it's a priority for us. So in our transition program, Life Beyond the Game, like we we invite the significant others as along with the players. Because as, as Usama said, that transition can be difficult, but they don't do it alone. We need to let the significant other know what the player is going through and the player what the significant other is going through. And in that way, we build the family unit. The same thing with all pro dad, it, it, with same thing with our uh, family and football event at the Super Bowl, which all pro dads helps coordinate, is while we're focusing on the father, the significant other is invited. And, and we actually, when we're on site, have a piece that we do with the moms. So in everything that we do, we, we set the priority by creating the intentional invitation. How were both of you able to transition? You both had different journeys into the NFL. Usama, you were a third round pick. Keith, you were an uh, undrafted free agent. You had to you know, fight for your, your, your NFL life, every roster cut, every paycheck, right? And, and you guys had a different journey into the league, but both were able to play for a significant amount of time. Were you prepared for life after the NFL? And how do you prepare guys based upon your experiences? Yeah, so I'll, I'll jump in real quick is that I think in the back of your mind, everybody has a plan, but it goes back to that famous Mike Tyson quote, everybody has a plan until they get hit. And so like in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, I will go back to my college and work the network and start to, you know, and, but then when it hits, it's tough. It's tough to be prepared for the loss, the loss of your finances, the loss of your structure, but most importantly for me, the loss of the mission and the loss of my identity, right? Since fourth grade, I was always the kid that balled, right? I was always a football player until I wasn't. And no matter how much I thought internally that I did not identify as a player, um, I certainly did. And so that was a journey that had to begin to unravel my identity, my purpose, and a, and a larger calling. And I think about my transition, and I know you said third round pick and everything. And it's like, you know, as a third rounder, I entered the league with the same hunger that, that I did as a, as a freshman in college, just like, I got to make it. I got to prove to these coaches that I'm the one. I felt like I was one of those, those bottom guys, those last guys recruited. As a third round, I still was like, you know what? These guys have positions that I'm trying to take. And throughout the years, I started to learn, okay, this is, it's a smart way to go about this. It's a way to prepare. It's a way to strategize. It's a way to uh, take care of my body, even though I didn't do the best job at that. But also it's it's a and it didn't hit me until after I was done, but it's a way to utilize your your strengths on the field as well as off the field. So when I think about what we do from the player engagement space and having heads of player engagement at each club that are preparing guys for that transition, like he said, even though you think you know what you want to do, you don't know until you know. I, uh, I exited the game after an ugly injury. ACL, LCL, hamstring off the bone. And I tried to bounce back. I tried to get it back and I didn't. And it was humbling. It hurt me. And then having the pressures from my family, you know, it's like, oh, come on, man, you can get back out there. Why, why'd you stop playing football as if it was my choice? <laughs> and you get those questions and you try to prepare guys and we've tried to prepare them or try to prepare them by, like he said, equipping, educating, empowering them with our workshops uh, year round, year round, off season. These are for the legends. These are for the current players. We uh, 
We hone in on on workshops that are offering professional development and entrepreneurship uh, and and brand building, uh, public speaking. Everybody has a story to tell. But uh, these these are things that can provide them with the tools to say, you know what, when you do, when that game is over, you have something else that you could fall into that you can move into and you could push for success. How much do each of you guys find it so much so helpful that you've played the game, you've had varying degrees of success, and, and you can be relatable to the players when you are in that player engagement space? I would say it's vital um, because you there's there's an empathy piece that you you may not no one's transition is the same, right? But we have identified uh, certain challenges that seem to be universal, right? Whether it's identity or purpose. In fact, there are clinically 10 transition challenges. And it's a, was when we talk to players, we're able to see where they are on that scale. And, and, and today, we've done a much better job of preparing guys for that tran- transition because it starts as a, as a rookie. And the message we put out is, um, you know, start this with the end in mind. And the choices you make now as a rookie will dictate how you end up leaving the league, right? And so uh, I see guys are in better shape than, than they were when we first started this, you know, at least for me, eight years ago, nine years ago. But now um, I think having gone through it always gives you that peace where you can talk straight up with a guy. But Sam, when you were speaking about your dad in the beginning, you, t- you said, you mentioned in this, uh, you know, my, my, my ears perked up when you said pray together before games. Uh, tell me a little bit about that and the importance of, of, of having that kind of, you know, the prayer and the relationship uh, w- with your children and, and teaching them. Ah, man, you know what? It, it starts that that faith starts at home. And I grew up in, in a household. I, I always say of educators. And if you're an educator, you're a servant. And that servant's mentality, it, it was stressed upon. It was it was it was imprinted in me from a young age. And when I think about the prayer, my dad, before every game, he started this. He said, hey, before we get on, before you touch that field, I want to pray with you. And we started to pray and it just continued on throughout college, throughout my professional years. And it was something that just was a not just a weight off of my shoulders, because so many people are asking for want you to help out, want you to do something. But before the game, it was not. Be at ease. God's got you. God's got your back. And that wasn't just for football. That was for life. And to tell my child that and be in that same I have a five-year-old baby girl. We make sure we pray every night before we get on the road. It's just one of those things that we do. And it's the constant building of that relationship, that family relationship, and, and incorporating it. Yes, we do it with my wife sometimes. We do it with her brother sometimes. But having that bond, that one-on-one between us is something that's special. Uh, when it was finally done, when my, I was finally done playing, I missed that. I missed that bond with my dad. I missed having those prayers. And, and now it's like, you know what? I've got my daughter to do that with. I got my son to do that with. Keith, I know you're also a fellow believer. Direct your children onto the right path, and when they're older, they will not leave it. Right? That's one of uh, yeah. a one of my favorites. Uh, can Can you uh, tell me how how that impacts your relationship with with your daughter, and and what you teach some of the guys when when you're able to be around them and give out some of the advice? Yeah. So very similar to Usama, for me with with my daughter Avery, it is the number one most important thing that my wife and I intentionally teach her is is, is God is faith in God, because I can't always promise that I will be with her 24 seven, wherever she goes, but we teach her that, that God will be. And for her, uh, we like similar to Usama, we pray every, every night. Um, we also, we also teach her scripture at a young age, like, because it, it, it builds her up inside and it's fun to just see her run around the house, either saying something that we know we taught her from the Bible or a song that she's learned that she just sings over and over. And every once in a while, she'll come up and say, um, Hey, Jesus made me right. And Jesus made you and Jesus made mommy and he loves us. And it's like, great. Like, cause I know no matter what, if she's got that piece, then she's got it all. 